right now here in the spin room joining me is Brian Fallon, press secretary for the Clinton campaign. Brian, thanks for being here. Great to be with you. Uh, so first of all, your assessment of how your candidate did tonight. Well, she's given three steady performances across the three different debates we've had so far, but I think this was her best. I think she came into tonight with two goals. Number one, state her positive vision for the country in terms of what she wants to do as president, give people something affirmative to vote for, not just uh, something to vote against in Donald Trump. But secondly, to highlight and accentuate why Donald Trump is temperamentally unfit and unacceptably to be the next commander in chief. And I thought that she did that quite well also. I think that the, the moment of this debate that will live on is his refusal to say that he will abide by the results of the election. That is something that is extremely troubling that already, even before tonight, you saw the likes of Speaker Ryan and uh, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, speak out against him, even floating the possibility of contesting the election results. I think that's going to be something that Republicans up and down the country that are running uh, down ballot races for House and Senate are going to be asked about in the coming days. And I can't imagine that very many people are going to be defending him on questioning the peaceful transition of power that has been a tradition in this country for centuries. Donald Trump went after Secretary Clinton on a number of issues, abortion, gun rights. Let's go ahead and play a little bit of the debate, specifically okay. the discussion of the Second Amendment, and then we'll talk about it on sure. the other side. There's no doubt that I respect the Second Amendment, that I also believe there's an individual right to bear arms. That is not in conflict with sensible, common sense regulation. And, you know, look, I understand that Donald's been uh, strongly supported by the NRA. The gun lobby's on his side. They're running millions of dollars of ads against me. And I regret that, because what I would like to see is for people to come together and say, of course, we're going to protect and defend the Second Amendment. I am a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment, and I am, I don't know if Hillary was saying it in a sarcastic manner, but I'm very proud to have the endorsement of the NRA, and it's the earliest endorsement they've ever given to anybody who ran for president. So I'm very honored by all of that. Uh, we are going to appoint justices. This is the best way to help the Second Amendment. We are going to appoint justices that will feel very strongly about the Second Amendment, that will not do damage to the Second Amendment. Uh, Brian, that was just one issue uh, where Donald Trump went after her. And in fact, just a short time ago, we were listening to a group of undecided voters uh, that Frank Luntz, a Republican pollster, had interviewed about their thoughts. And one of the folks said that they consistently have felt as though they don't necessarily get the truth from Secretary Clinton, this being an issue where, of course, her political opponents have tried to characterize her as someone who wants to take guns away and do uh, damage to the Second Amendment. Why is she having so much trouble on that issue? of honest and trustworthiness. We have seen that number uh, consistently be at 60, 64 percent or so, people thinking that she is not someone who is trustworthy. Well, I think a big contributor to that is the fact that she's the subject of so many false attacks, and this is a perfect distillation of that. I think that it is one of the things that Republicans have been repeating. Donald Trump has been repeating. The NRA has been repeating this idea that she wants to do away with the Second Amendment and doesn't acknowledge an individual right to bear arms, and that's just false. That's been independently assessed time after time. It's been fact-checked as false. He continues to repeat it, and after a period of time, I think that sinks in, and people start to believe it, but it's not true. Her position is she supports an individual right to bear arms, but she thinks that they're, just like with all the other rights that are afforded by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, that there are reasonable restrictions that we can place, reasonable regulations that do not completely eliminate somebody's right to bear arms, but put sensible restrictions on it. So uh, having background checks, for instance, which is something, it's a common sense consensus proposal that has 70 to 80 percent of the public support. That's something that we should be able to make progress on, but it, only because the NRA uh, has such a hold over so many Republican members of Congress. Uh, are we unable to make progress on that? Donald Trump is somebody that in that exchange, I think it was pretty well highlighted by Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump is somebody that's beholden to the NRA. Just like in the other issues that were discussed in those opening 15 minutes, he's somebody that says that on uh, Roe v. Wade, he's going to appoint Supreme Court justices that will overturn that decision. And he's somebody on immigration that says that he doubled down on his support for building the wall. Uh, so on issue after issue in that opening exchange that went about 15, 20 minutes that was very policy oriented and very substantive, I think those 15, 20 minutes alone highlighted the important stakes of this election. Before we let you go, Brian, I noticed Secretary Clinton there at one point had said uh, when it came to the immigration debate that Donald Trump choked after that meeting with the Mexican president. Donald Trump seemed to leave that attack there, didn't even seem to address that. What did you make of that? Well, I think that a lot of people might have thought coming into tonight that Hillary Clinton was going to play it safe based on the state of the race right now, where she's clearly enjoying some momentum in some of the key battleground states. But I don't think she did 
that. Uh, she did not take anything for granted, and I think she very well distilled the difference between her and Donald Trump on these issues, challenged him on the fact that, yes, he went talks in the United States about how he's going to build a wall, but went down to Mexico, didn't bring it up with the Mexican president, choked, as she said. Somebody that goes around saying that he's going to uh, clamp down on outsourcing, but somebody that you know engages in outsourcing with all of his private businesses. Uh, somebody that goes around and suggests that he's going to be tough and stand up for the United States abroad, but won't stand up to Vladimir Putin, won't even acknowledge his role in the hack. So I thought that she aggressively made the case against him and left him at some point speechless or changing the topic. All right. Brian Fallon, Clinton campaign press secretary. Thanks so much for your time, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank you.